Hello, hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Natural20, and this is Fire Emblem Three Houses Crimson Flower Maddening. Today, we are going to deal with something that is rather interesting. It is Paralog Again, which happens in Chapter 11 of Crimson Flower. Now, this happens for a few reasons, but broadly speaking, what's going to happen is I'll do five Paralogs on the trot. Now, the reason that this is Crimson Flower exclusive is because Chapter 12 of Crimson Flower loses you a month, effectively, of doing Paralogs. So if you want to complete your stuff in Crimson Flower on time, you need to do them all, all by Chapter 11, if they are available in the top half of the game. That means, for me, I had to do five Paralogs across that time, and that was a bunch of fun, because I had to do the Action Wolf Paralogs as well. So to that extent, we're going to go through all of them. I'm going to explain my strategy for as many as I can in as much detail as I can, whilst keeping it short, sweet, and enjoyable for you guys. So with that in mind, let's get to the video. Tremble before us. We are the great navy of Almira. Resist, and we'll burn this town to the ground. So we begin <laughs> with pirates. The Almira Navy. This is going to be tougher than I expected. Or Almira Navy pretending to be They're pirates? Bluffing, but it seems to be working on the merchants. Shall we? It's the knights! Please, save us! We'll reward you handsomely! So yes, for this chapter, your sense objective sense is to prevent ships. any enemy Please, flyers or any units from getting in the center uh, square that you're defending zeros. from here. You can see the battle lines drawn there. Now, the thing is that this paralog is what a level 17 paralog, and most of my guys are about level 20. So I'm not going to get any experience from doing this, and I don't really want to spend my entire time during paralog again, like dealing with all of this ridiculousness. So if I was playing super optimally, I could potentially do this for more experience, but I don't really care, so I'm just going to disrespect the game. You know, if I can get in range with Lysithia, because I can calculate range well, right, guys? Right? There you go. So, obviously, this is a commander kill mission. So, you, you just fly Lysithia over, and she explodes the commander. GG, no re. Uh, so, an important note about this map is that if you take it on early, it is actually quite a good experience farming map, because it will spawn unlimited reinforcements. Uh, which is pretty handy if you want to get lots and lots of experience on your characters. Well, that's over with. They were a lot more trouble than I expected. Alois, no, they weren't. Thank you so much. They weren't any trouble. Here's your reward. Please take it. Uh, this being Crimson Flower, by the way, I can't get Alois, so I don't have him right now. Uh, which means, unfortunately, I'm not going to get all the battalions from this either. I only get one, which is Shamir's battalion. And unsurprisingly, Lysithia, being the only person who did anything, uh, is going to get the award for their motivation and be the MVP. It's raining, Professor. So the next paralog we're taking on is Manuel and Hanneman. So I believe that this is level 19 paralog. Every time it aches, I get angry. You understand, yeah? I'm sure they had their reasons to kidnap Flame, but still. Did they really need to stab me? what I have to do with it? They ruined my beautiful porcelain skin. Worse, they took off before I could stab them back. So rude. I, I love this just for Manuela's voice acting. So this map begins with Manuela separated from the rest of the group. But you'll remember that in the previous missions, I leveled up Manuela. So instead of being a level 19 priest, which is what she would happen to be normally, for this, she's going to be, what, a level 21 trickster? And that makes this a lot easier than it should be. So notably, you've got relatively minimal deployment. So one thing I would suggest doing is making sure that you've got a flyer or two. They help a lot with getting to Manuela quickly, even though she should be able to fight on her own. I'm still not that confident in whether she can survive a brawler punching her in the face twice, though. So... I'm not going to have her engaged here, but she does do decent damage with that Levin Sword. And Manuela's uh, major gimmick is that she's very, very fast. So 
More often than not, she will double with that Leaven Sword, which is quite handy. And Edelgard is over here proving why Claude is a good unit. I'm going to leave her in range of those guys. They're not going to be able to kill her. They barely do anything because she is m monstrously defensive and much higher level than these guys. Silenced. Uh, and the other thing that's going on here is uh, there are these guys. Now, they're actually quite fast and fairly dangerous to casters especially. They'll hit them twice and kill them straight away. So the big deal is that you can kind of deal with them here using Shamir, which is what I'm doing. She's very, very fast as well. Is a part of life. And I believe she's able to just double and kill them. Yep. So that's the power of Darting Blow, by the way, coming into uh, line. Another one down. She's getting those doubles because she has, what, plus six speed on initiation? Darting Blow is ridiculous. It's just insane that that ability exists, and she's very lucky to have it. A bunch of meddlesome losers. Maybe we should take a hostage for leverage. Capture that woman. We'll show them what the Death God Gang's made of. Death God Gang? What kind of childish nonsense? Where's the Death Knight? So they they, they made an error. And this, by the way, is when you move Manuela far enough forward, she aggroes a bunch of dudes. But at this point, the chapter is already done. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's not very difficult. Uh, especially when you're taking it on at like level 21, 22. So the next chapter is Ash's chapter. So I recruited him purely to get this chapter because it gives boots, which give plus one movement. So this is, to me, this is the hardest paralog. Uh, at least that I'm taking on right now. I find this one the most difficult. Because it's a fog of war map. But unlike the previous ones that we had before, it's not really fair. The previous Fog of War maps had you advancing into the fog, but you had units with relatively decent range. Uh, sorry, not relatively decent, you had relatively short range on the opposing units. And that meant that you could deal with them relatively easily, you could walk forward, and maybe two would come into range if you really messed up. It's just not the case here. The units that spawn are like Assassins and Pegasus Knights, so they have mobility for days. They can fly out the fog from re areas you can't see, double and kill units, and there's not much you can do about it. This this mission guzzles rewinds. It's so difficult to deal with. Now, you'll see there at the top that there's a priest with a battalion, and the idea is that if you kill this guy, then you immediately stop reinforcements from coming from that side. And I would strongly advise doing so, if you can. I don't, at this point in time when I'm playing this, technically know he's there. I didn't know until I used the torches. But if you're playing, I think it's perfectly reasonable to look at this map ahead of time and figure out where enemies are. So you don't do what I just did here, which is run an into an ambush where she's going to immediately explode. To work. I'm like, maybe I can rescue Annette somehow. There's probably a way. Probably. I'm thinking about it, though. I'm like, well, okay, I don't have Stride. I can use Stride, maybe, to save her. It's all up in the air. Do I want to burn a Rewind at the beginning of the turn? Probably not. I'd probably just want to reset the map, but equally, do I really need to reset the map? I've got nine Rewinds. I'm going in at level 20. This should be okay, right? Of course, I realize that Constance has draw back, fire in, draw a net back, problem solved. So you need to maintain a defense on all sides here because enemies will come from basically all the edges of the map. And the objective here is to prevent Rhea from dying or kill the enemies available within the turn limit, which I believe is 10 turns. You're probably going to get to the turn limit. It's probably going to be the easiest way of dealing with it. I'm trying to think here of how I kill that priest safely without Edelgard immediately exploding. And this is the other difficulty, actually. So, a lot of the enemies here are priests, which means that they've got very, very high res. So, if you're taking, you know, a constant Lysithia in, often they can't get the one-shots that they need, because these guys are fast enough to avoid a double, and resistant enough to avoid uh, dying when they get doubled with, like, fire. Fortunately, though, I have a Shamir, and Shamir does not care. 
The other big thing to note, by the way, is that the area revealed by torches is dependent on the user's magic stat. So when you're in a Fog of War map, what you really want to do is make sure that the characters that you have that have torches are your casters. Because they'll reveal a bigger area every single time that happens, which I think is very, very handy. It seems that taking out the we should be think this through. Anyway, we get Edelgard out of dodge, everything's fine. Constance gets attacked by a knight out of nowhere, but she's fine, she explodes him. Of course, then another one comes out of nowhere. I, I had the, that area revealed, I just didn't have it revealed far enough, so Constance died. And then Annette is also probably going to die. But yeah, this map sucks. I, I This map is really, really annoying. Uh, and I sit there knowing that Edelgard does not quite have the HP to kill this guy. Leaving him on- oh, but then she crits, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> she crits to get um, the extra one HP she needed to kill. So yeah, if you take out that unit, then that stops the reinforcements from that end, and that stops all reinforcements from that. Of course, however, that does not prevent... Uh, Pegasus Knight's reinforcements from so far up screen that I can't see them killing Shamir. Yeah, so I have to reset and then reconfigure my lines here to figure out exactly how Shamir doesn't die. It is an ass. But eventually, I managed to rewind enough times to figure out where all the enemies are to be able to deal with the problem and get Annette and Shamir here, sorry, get Annette uh, and Constance here to kill the final enemy. Apostates, you sully the name of the goddess. You are the apostates. The goddess is with me. Rhea, you're all apostates. <laughs> Forgive them their sins and save their souls. Pretty sure so this is not going to be happy with what you've been up to. Captured the bishop, but they didn't make it easy for us. What now, Lady Rhea? We must go to the headquarters of the Western Church. Perhaps there is still someone there who knows what has transpired. Probably a summary execution in order for them. It may not be much, but we'll do whatever we can. I am sure you will be a great help. I am glad to have you by my side. So yes, obviously on Crimson Flower you can't recruit Catherine, so the only way to get this paralog is by recruiting Ash. And the important thing is I got the Shoes of the Damn Wind, so people I can get plus one move on one person. I believe I used that up on Lysithia, which I think is a good call. Uh, the extra point of movement is pretty good for her because I'm planning to stay in Grimori, which means she'll have quite limited movement. So we move on, and this is Black Market Scheme. So a lot of you might not have seen this. Uh, this is the Ashen Wolf Paralogues, the first of them. Uh, now this is Balthus and Happy's Paralogue, and it's level 19 Paralogue. So you won't actually be dealing with promoted units here. Most of them will be around level 20 or so, but will be archers and not snipers. And, you know... Uh, armored knights rather than uh, great knights, for example. Now, I contest that this is easier than the map I just did. Uh, and the reason being is that if you take this at level 20, 21, which is when I'm taking it, and frankly, on maddening is the only option for the time that you can take this damn thing because you just don't have time elsewhere to spend it, uh, if you're you know playing optimally, if you take this at this time, it's not very hard. Your units are very, very powerful at this point if they've been built properly. Which, you know, if you're following my advice, you're getting stuff like Darting Blow, all that kind of stuff. Uh, darting Blow, Death Blow, Hit Plus 20. Your units can be very, very powerful by this point, so they should be able to deal with stuff. Now, the big thing that gets people on Black Market Scheme is reinforcements. But we'll examine those in a second. Now, my Happy and Balthus here are, what, level 19? So, they're not incredibly weak, because I recruited them very, very late to make sure they were strong for this. But, uh... Here, you'll notice, uh, there are going to be some reinforcements that show up. Now, the important thing to understand about the reinforcements in this map Vimble Venter kills this guy in one hit, which is great. 
only a 98% chance. I'm a bit worried about uh, Constant Smith missing, but it's fine. So, on Black Market Scheme, reinforcements, same turn reinforcements, appear after you cross certain points in the map. So when you cross from the left to the right across that bridge, reinforcements appear. Now, it turns out, right, that if you use stuff like Dark Flyers to cross the bridge and provoke the reinforcements, you can just sit them where they're invincible. And I didn't know those reinforcements were there. It's just I was using Dark Flyers mobility at this point. And so again, if you're using all the resources you've got available, you can dodge all of this stuff. So the reinforcements there that just appeared, they seem threatening, but they're not going to hit Guri very hard, right? Like, 2116, as long as one of them dies, then it just doesn't matter. And also, the way that they're positioned right now means that only one, only two of them can attack him at once. So it's, it's not that it's an easy paralog. It's not that by any means. But... It's one that's difficulty is strongly dictated by when you take it. And if you just take it at a sensible time, you're laughing. So here, you know, I, I'm worried about Yuri taking two attacks, so I just sit Leonie next to him. And bang, bang. They're, nobody's going to be able to kill him. It's just not possible. At most, they can do 21 plus whatever the archer can do, which is not going to be sufficient to take down 40 HP. So the other thing is uh, that I think three turns in, more reinforcements show up across all the map. But you can see from what I've done here, I've cleared most of the map already. <laughs> Again, the level advantage is huge. It's hugely important because it means that you can just clear up so much stuff so quickly that by the time the reinforcements show up on turn three, it just doesn't matter. You've got enough space to work with at that point that you can properly reinforce up and have it be okay again right this isn't to undermine or underplay the difficulty people have with this chapter it's very very legitimate but they, the game presents you with a way of dealing with this i think and even on maddening i don't think once you've used that way to the best of your ability it's too bad even these reinforcements here, by the way, probably couldn't kill Happy and Balthus at level 19. They just can't. They don't have the damage for it. Should I have held back? I'm still going to kill them anyway, to be sure. But, you know, that swordsman can't kill Happy. And therefore, we wouldn't be able to kill Balthus. Sorry, well, this is level 21. I apologize. I recruited them late enough that they came in at 21, not 19. That's a big difference as well, by the way. You say so. I should remember what my levels are more. I should have better uh, notes on exactly what's going on here. That's ah, fine, though. I'm sure it'll be okay. So, yeah. Broadly speaking, I just clear up the map. Uh, the reinforcements show up, they aren't sufficient to beat me after I've taken down everything, so I have to show up and murder everything. Easy there, buddy. Danger wise, that thing's on par with the hero's relic. If you don't have a crest, you'll turn into a hideous monster. You can't scare me. No price is too high to save my precious daughter. So this is the first hint of something interesting on this map. For the sake of my house. Anyway, whilst uh, they yell at each other across the map, uh, Leone murders Baron Ox without taking any damage. Although she doesn't crit once, which I'm very disappointed about. I think I've gotten stronger. I... No. But of course, this map is actually a bit of a dick about this. So that, unlike the time that Micklin transforms, this guy transforms after you kill him and transforms into a monster that can act on the same turn, uh, which is problematic. But I have enough dudes that I'm able to uh, deal with him well enough. So the only thing left to do is kill the Fallen Beast. 
Now, unfortunately, I can't really get special dialogue here because uh, two characters I'd probably get special dialogue from are on the other side of the map hiding. Right, well, how do I kill this guy? <laughs> Try for a windsweep crit, maybe, and maybe that works. I think that's what I'm looking for here. Oh no, just an iron sword, fair enough. That's my so I made a big deal about how good windsweep is, and I don't find myself using it very much. Stay focused. <laughs> and I make sure to get Violet some healing experience here, because why not? Ridiculous. And that's an easy enough kill. Again, Yuri abhors strength and has absolutely ridiculous speed and basically nothing else. A Ferdinand gets an MVP again by running around, Tempest lancing a bunch of people. My daughter, Monica. And that's it. Uh, His daughter is Monica. At least we got it back. I know I owe you and Happy an apology, so uh, I'm sorry. Really sorry. Mean that. I'm sure you had your reasons. When we get back, you better explain what the heck those reasons were. He wanted a sick-ass hero's relic, duh. That noble guy, though. He didn't seem interested in hearing what we had to say. Yeah. So morning. this is actually a more unique Crimson Flower dialogue. That's about to come up. For certain, but it's likely he wanted that item for his daughter. The man in question is Baron Ox. He is a minor noble from the west of the Empire. His daughter went missing last year. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that she's still alive. Monica, the girl Kranya was impersonating, she was Baron Ox's daughter. What does that have to do with the So, race? you don't uh, get Baron all of that detail from Edelgard? Has it that Baron Ox received a proposition? His daughter's safe return in exchange for a hero's relic. Of course. This whole mess happened because somebody wanted to get their mitts on a relic. Could be folks like Kranya and Solon were pulling the strings themselves. It's possible, but we weren't able to get anything out of Baron Ox. The head of that house died years ago, and the whole family has been a mess ever since. We have no choice but to find another source for So yes, yeah, sorry, uh... Edelgard's comments about Baron Ox and them investigating all that kind of stuff don't come up in any other route. They only ever come up in Crimson Flower, which I really like. So we're moving on to Constance and Yuri's paralogue. Now this is a level 21 paralogue, and that's going to change the way it works a fair bit. And it, it, this is, to me, a, a fair bit more difficult than the Balthus chapter is. At least when you take them at this point in the game. I knew you'd see things my way. Allow me to make a few quick preparations and we can depart. Oh, what a delicious facade it gives me to imagine the look upon the Duke's face. <laughs> I sure hope the church knows what they're doing. Choosing her to negotiate this. So, again, if you take this power log, as late as you need to, and as late as you can, it is very doable and not easy, but very manageable on maddening. If I have to pry it from your dead hand, all the better. Children of the beasts, expose your true selves. What the? Please make it stop. So. Duke is in danger. Yeah, uh, I took this map basically blind. I, I've done it once before, and I didn't look up anything. Up anything. I was confident I could deal with it, with the forces I had, uh, and coming in at the level I was coming in at. Most of my guys are 22, 23 at this point. 
Now, yeah, you'll notice here that a lot of the units are now promotes. And that's because it's a level 21 paralogue, so the units that you're fighting start promoting. That being said, none of this matters. Because they're just going to explode to all the ridiculousness that my characters can do. Like, Constance just kills this guy in two hits, doesn't take any uh, attack damage back, Felix killed his guy. Sure thing. Uh, I think Yuri can kill this one, yep, no problem. I think about it. I don't know if I'd do it. No, I don't want him to take damage. I will prevail. And yeah, Edelgard is a monster now because she's turned into a Wyvern Lord. And she's got bonkers strength. Absolutely insane strength. Let's get to it. Uh, and also, yes, the fact that I run assassins helps her a lot. Because I run so many assassin characters, all this terrain that would normally inhibit my movement just doesn't matter. It's why I think assassin is one of the better classes in this game, by the way, because it just gets to ignore all of this and move at six. And it's just so powerful at this point at stage in the game. I don't know why I use an iron sword instead of Wodao. I think I'm trying to save charges on it. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. But you can see here, right, that I'm already at a very significant advantage when most of my characters one-shot the enemies on this map, right? Despite the fact that they're maddening units with a significant level advantage. And that's the power of builds, right? That's the power of uh, developing your characters properly. I won't allow you to steal the relic. Stand down. Leave the... So, this is the gimmick of the map. What is that thing? Every time a thief it cannot be. reaches Duke Gert, they turn into monstrous creatures. Still, the results of our little experiment were nothing short of exquisite. So, the aim is to get across the map as quickly as you can. And laugh as the only just murders this guy. Uh, yes, yeah, so the aim is to get across the map as quickly as you can. So the Duke Gert only gets attacked by one monstrous creature and only ever attacks one thief. Now, this is why a lot of my force are assassins, flyers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, even Ferdinand on his horse. They get across the map quickly, right? And I'm running like my A-team, basically. Ferdinand probably wouldn't be there, but aside from that, I'm running a lot of my more powerful characters for this. In very, very powerful classes. And just their ability to get across this map as quickly as they can is a huge help. So Duke, I believe, will flee directly to wherever Violet is. Apparently, so I don't. Apparently, this might change based on whether you talk to him. But the behavior that I saw was, no matter what, he just runs up by Earth. Watch this. Which means that you can bait the AI into positioning itself properly if you know that fact. I don't tend to do very much of that, but I can. I would say that. Uh, well, the thing is, right, you can't do this paralogue without Dark Fire being available to you. Constance, right? Of House Nouvelle? It has been some time, Duke Garrett. Your present circumstances seem rather dire. You have no obligation to help me, but... Won't you please lend a hand? Whatever you require, my refusal to assist you would besmirch House Nouvelle's honor. But yeah, I, I think that... You know, these Ash and Wolf chapters as well are done with the idea that you've got these classes available to you. And Dark Flower is tremendously powerful as a result. Got this. Step aside while we sort this out. Beasts. So yes, I, I believe on what, turn four or five, all of these reinforcements show up. Now, again, if you've taken this early, and you're still struggling to kill the previous guys, this is a big deal and a big problem for you. It might be turn three that they show up, actually. It might be turn. 
Uh, but for me, I killed everything already. <laughs> Uh, and what I've got available at each of the points is going to be more than sufficient to be able to deal with what's coming up, coming up to me. To an extent, right, I, I mean, this is the power of levels more than anything, really. It's the power of taking this at the right time, and not even knowing that the reinforcements are coming. These caught me by surprise. I didn't know they were going to happen. But, you know, you have nine, ten rewinds for a reason. Right? And the answer is, if this does take you by surprise, you can rearrange, you can deal with it in some way. I feel like there are sufficient tools in this game to be able to deal with this. And it's... At this point in the game, it, it's, you know, a, a bit of a thing. And, and a bit of, like... <laughs> And it requires a little bit of finesse, but other than that, I think it's just very, very doable and fun. I, I really enjoy this map, actually, because uh, I get to use a lot of the breadth of the roster that I've created. Should I have held back? Oh, yes, I think Violet accidentally crits or something, and I get confused. It might be that I left Edelgard in the wrong position. It was something weird, I forget. Oh, that was it. I realized that if I leave Edelgard with a bow and put her in position, then she can uh, probably shoot back at somebody. So that's what I did. So I realized that that guy's going to shoot at her, and then she can shoot back, and that's why I rewind her. So this is another thing I'd suggest doing more of. Don't think of your rewinds even as just rewinds to stop screw-ups. Your rewinds are a resource the same as anything else, so you can use them offensively, right? To create situations which are just better for yourself, even if it doesn't result in the loss of a unit. I think a lot of difficulty that people have is not aggressively using uh, rewind enough. And I think you can do a lot better in this game if you create, use rewind to engineer better situations for yourself. It means that you're more robust in the future. It means that probably you need fewer rewinds later on. Because there's less time spent panic adjusting to different situations. This situation. Exactly, Lysithia. So, here is something fun. The knights over there are all going to aggro on our Lysithia and try and kill her. Because she has no defense. Uh, and if I position her there, they're going to do a very fun thing. Where they uh, start running around the back corner to try and get to her. Whilst she's a dark fire. So here we get to see the power of Master Sniper. Uh, Shamir has Hunter's Volley now. Which means that she can spend 5 Endurance on a Steel Bow. Or Durability on a Steel Bow. And just explode a nerd. Didn't even need it because she crit on a 40%. I think I rewind here because I didn't break the armor. Damn, turning those poor fools into monsters? Ruthless. Did I spy a fragment of a crest stone? Interesting. I... Constance, this is not the time for research. I mean, Constance, it would be very, very good of you to research that because that's going to come up later, I think. Yes, I have to uh, rewind because uh, I didn't expect the crit. And I want to break all the armor, damn it. The sun. The death of Duke Garrett would present And Yes, uh, she has unique dialogue for when she engages with a monstrous fury for the first time. I believe Yuri has unique dialogue as well. I don't know who he gets there and does it though. I actually really like this chapter just for how well it's put together as well. Because yeah, uh, it has a lot of cool, unique dialogue to it. Uh, it has a lot of, you know, just chat between Yuri and Constance about what's happening. And I think a lot of the paralogues lack that, right? A lot of the paralogues are just like, here is map, let's go. 
And this actually offers a little bit of insight into, you know, the Empire strategy later, where they use crust stones to turn things into demonic beasts, on other routes at least. Uh, we'll look at Crimson Flower and how the Empire works there when we get to that point in time. So yeah, at this point, the enemies next to the boss break and start attacking forward. But again, by this point, you've cleared out most of the guys that are there. So you have one soldier that engages Dorothea, who then explodes him with thunder. Because if you're a great knight, why the hell would you engage Dorothea? He might be a paladin. Equally, you shouldn't engage Dorothea. She has magic. Yes, and you can see the horses trying to run after Lysithia. She's going to have none of it. And it's going to be great fun because she can just fly back over the wall whilst harassing them with Nosferatu. I just worked harder. You know, over the wall she goes. They'll run back around the other side. Try and get it. Nope. It's not going to work, guys. Marianne proving very useful there with the adjutant heal. But uh, Bile can't move, so he's stuck this turn. There was a guy with a battalion there. I mean, he managed to get at Byleth, but it's not a huge deal. Let's say they continue to have fun with these horses. And yeah, we get to the uh, boss with no real trouble. By that point, we've mopped up all the reinforcements. We've mopped up the rush. There's not much he can do to us. I wanted to check if the boss had any dialogue with Byleth. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I, and I don't believe he's got dialogue with anyone interesting, actually. So I leave it to Felix to uh, take him down. I failed to attain the relic, but the experiment yielded results. That's all that matters. Uh, unfortunately, Myson does get away. I think the coast is clear now. Who? Well, that was bizarre and unfortunate. What the hell happened to them anyway? The gulf of my ignorance prevents me from answering such a question. Oh, Coco, you're plenty smart. And that is uh, the Ash and Wolf Paralogs. If you take them at the last possible moment, they are very doable. And I promise you, even on Maddening, you guys can do it. I am not by no means an extraordinary player at this game. I am worryingly average, but I have a good head for how things are built, and I have a good idea of how to employ flyers to their most ridiculous potential. And I, I think that that is something that most people have a good idea about. If you're thinking about attempting Maddening, if you're thinking about attempting these chapters, they are absolutely, absolutely doable and possible, and honestly, they provide... Quite a fun challenge as well, in my opinion. So I, I thoroughly recommend grabbing the DLC if you haven't. It's good DLC, it's good fun. I thoroughly recommend trying these out, trying this stuff out on Maddening if you haven't already. Because again, uh, one of the things I find most rewarding about Three Houses in general is building my units and seeing them come to fruition in a meaningful way. It allows me to deal with harder and harder challenges and I think that the strength of how well you can build units in this game allows you such latitude against enemies like this and against really, really difficult paralogs like these ones that I think it just speaks to the strength of that building and how much fun it is to do that. Because I feel great coming into a chapter like this and seeing my units perform as well as they do. So with that, thank you all very, very much for watching. And we will catch you, and I say we, I will have a co-host next time. And I will catch you next time for Crimson Flower Chapter 12.